In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some other tools in Illustrator, like the type tool, how to create outlines to transform your type into shapes that you can edit, and how to use layers as well to keep your design organized. First, as you're thinking about using type, we've got the type tool at the top of the screen, and you can see a list of different fonts that you can choose from. For the illustrated word design, you look for a font that helps communicate the meaning of the word. If you don't find a font on the list, what you can do is download a royalty free font online, either using Font Squirrel or Defont. I like Defont because you can search for different words or look at different styles as well. So you could look for groovy fonts and then you're able to download it if it says free for personal use. I'm looking to create a word that looks prickly. So sometimes you can type in a word in the search tool and then you can find some options that way. I do like this one. I'll be able to alter it to make it look even more prickly. You can also preview what your word would look like. I already have the word prickly showing, but you can type it in and it will display the word. If you want to download it, you can click download. And you can open the zip file. I'll search for it. So here we have it. It's under fonts. You can also, like I did, just search for it. Double click on that. So it will open it up and you'll want to click install font. Here's a list of different fonts that I've downloaded. And what should happen is it should be in your font search bar now. You look up prickly pear, let's see if it's there, right there. So when I'm ready to type it out, you can click the type tool right here. You can see there are different subcategories. You can play around those if you'd like to type on a path. You can draw a line first and then type along it. If you want a curvy line, you could use the pen tool. Type that, go to your type, type on a path, click on the path. Notice that it creates the words along the path. I'm going to command plus to zoom in here. I don't want prickly on the word, but I can just type, start typing prickly. And if I continue typing, it would place the word along that curve. You wanted a word like wave. You go at the top, there is a character panel when you're in the type mode and you can change the size. You can also change the tracking and spread out your letters more very gradually. It's a faster way to change the tracking with the percentage. It also stretches out the word as well. You can also make your word taller or shorter and you can change individual letters as well if you only have certain letters selected. It will only adjust those letters. So now I have some tall letters as well. I think I want my prickly word just on regular type. So instead, I'm just going to type it with my regular type tool. You can click and a word will appear. It's just blobs. And I'm going to type prickly. I'm going to try all caps to see what happens and I'll go to my type. You can also go to the character panel and you can drop down and select your text that way. I'm going to type in P for prickly and change it to prickly. My direct selection tool, sorry, my selection tool allows me to drag it around 
but you'll notice that it is just text. So even my direct select tool, I can't do a whole lot because it's the letters themselves. If I want to edit my words, which you should edit all of your text, once you have the word how you want it using the font and the sizing, although I can drag, hold down shift, and I can make it larger and smaller, what you'll do next is go to type, create outlines. What this is going to do is it's going to make all of your text into the vector paths and anchor points. So watch what happens when I switch from regular font or text to create outlines. It has the anchor points and you can see the stroke line around the letters themselves. Now if I go to direct select, I can click and I can actually edit my words themselves. This gives you a lot of freedom with making changes and dragging sections to look pointier and longer. Oh, that just dragged the whole thing. Click the anchor point, let go, click again. Remember, you can hold down the plus to add anchor points if you want to make more prickly sections. I can add anchor points, go to my direct select tool A, and I can click on that. Oops, maybe drag that down. Drag, oops, drag this up. I'm gonna add even more, hold down the plus. We're gonna add more points there to make it even more prickly. So going and creating outlines is gonna allow you to edit the word even more to make it how you want. Again, you can still hold down, if you're in the pen tool, you can still hold down Alt and it will allow you to add curves if you want. I don't want that for my prickly word, so I'm going to leave it like that. You can edit and adjust your outlines, add to your anchor points, make changes, just like you did with the regular shapes as well, because now your text is outlined. The other thing I want to show you is using the layer tool. It looks like two squares, flattened squares on top of each other. If you don't see that on your tool bar on the right, you can go to Window, Layers, and that will open up the window, or you can click on it to expand it. These are the layers of your artwork. So right now I have prickly, you can see it's really tiny. I have prickly on one layer and it's blue. So when I click on this, oops, when I click on this and edit it, it is blue. What I want you to do is use your layer tool to keep your design organized. So if I have another shape that I want to draw somewhere else, I can create a new layer down here, or I can delete layers as well if I don't want that layer of artwork. Let's say I want to draw a shape. I'm just going to use my pen tool to draw sort of a cactus shape. And a little bit of a curve. If at some point I want to only edit this shape, what I can do is lock my other layers so that I can't edit this at all if I locked the prickly layer. I can also title that prickly, the prickly word, so that I can edit it if it's unlocked, but it's safe. And that just allows you to not mess up other parts of your drawing if you have it on different layers. You can also make it invisible if you're trying to work on something and this is prickly is in the way I can make it invisible too. So that's how you use the lock layer. If you don't want something, you can drag it to delete it to the trash button and that will get rid of it for you. The pathfinder uses shapes and causes them to either merge together or separate from each other. So I'm going to actually create a new shape 
I like using some circles to demonstrate. I'm going to draw one circle and I'm going to draw another circle in my circle layer that I'm going to title circle. If I double click on the layer, I can change the color, I can change the title. So I have two circles right now. I'm going to change the color of this one by clicking the fill tool just so that you can see. And so I have two circles. You can see the red one is on top of the black one. And if I go down to my Pathfinder tool, looks like two boxes overlapping each other, or you can go to Window Pathfinder, and that will open up the Pathfinder tool. If you hold your cursor over each shape, you'll see that this unites. It says you can create a compound shape by combining two shapes. Here's you can, here you can minus the front. So it will sh subtract the shape that's behind it. Intersect. You can keep whatever is overlapping instead of what's not. And you can exclude. You can only keep what is not overlapping. So what you'll have to do is if you wanted to play around with these, here's also divide. It will separate everything. Trim, merge, and crop. I'm going to show you how to use these shapes with each other with the circles. So I'm going to overlap it like this first to show you. What I can do is go to Unite. If I select both shapes, hold down Shift. I have both selected. I clicked both and I go to Unite. You can see that it makes one shape. When I go to my direct selection tool, they are not two shapes anymore. They combine into one shape. To go backwards. You can also select both shapes and say minus front. That means the shape that was in front disappeared. It even cut out the black circle. Select both shapes once again. Intersect. It only keeps what was overlapping. Exclude. It takes away what was overlapping. So now I have a shape that has a hollow section. I like showing that with a donut. You can select both and hit exclude and now I have a little donut hole and I can change the shape of it. The other ones are divide. Oops, I need both selected. Divide. What it did was it actually cut apart everything that overlaps. So now I have multiple shapes. I'm going to select both again. Trim. It cuts off what was overlapping. Crop. Let's see what that does. That cropped out everything that was overlapping once again. So the shape modes are good if you draw shapes and then the pathfinders you can use with more anchor points and paths. They don't have to be exact shapes. So you can experiment with drawing your shapes, but then also editing your shapes by trimming them, combining them, minusing different sections so that you can create the shapes you want. Remember to use your pen tool to draw a lot. Use your text to start with a word and then really make sure you alter it and change it by using your pathfinder and shapes that you draw as well. If you would like to use an image, what you can do is either draw it with the pen tool or pencil tool yourself. You can scan in a drawing that's drawn with Sharpie or a pen or what you can do is download an image that is royalty free from online. I'm going to look up some images. I do really like the Noun Project. It has a lot of great icons that you can use, but with the free subscription, you can't alter too many things and you have to get credit to the artist. If you type in royalty free SVG 
which is scalable vector graphic that will give you images that you can use and alter that have anchors and paths that you can edit in Illustrator. Click on public domain vectors is one option. Let's see if I can find a cactus to use. And I'm going to take this one. It's public domain, so that means that I can use it how I want, and I will download it to my desktop. I can go back to Illustrator and click File, Place to place my file. First, though, I'm going to create a new layer. Well, I'll keep my cactus layer that I have layer that says cactus, file place, and I can select the cactus gray, place it down, drag it to get the size I want. You can already see that it looks pretty complicated and it's an entire group that says group of vector files. So I can move it all together, but it is grouped together. We'll zoom in here. If you want to be able to edit it, what you'll need to do then is click on the object, go to Object Ungroup, Object Ungroup. I usually click it a couple times and you'll start to see that so many paths are showing and lines are drawn. And now, let's get that outline. I should be able to change the shape of this cactus. I can even go to my direct select tool, clicking A, and I can alter and change the shape if I'd like. I could turn this into letters. So you can make this how you want. You can also delete anchor points, add anchor points, and use your Pathfinder tools on shapes like this.